these crazy fights uh, with my mom, my dad, and these shoplifters. And Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Chelsea. Um, after your last fight, you know, I got a message, and I actually messaged you about it, about your parents. They used to own a, a, a resale store in Stockton. You know, I got to ask you because I feel like this is a good story. That person, I believe, is the, the child of a person that worked at the store, and they told me that your mother was the regulator when people would come in and, and shoplift. And your mom's not really the biggest individual. Could you give me more details about this? Um, yeah, you know, I grew up in a family. My parents have a grocery store. So my whole life, they've, they've always had the grocery store. And I just remember being a kid and just seeing these drawn, these crazy fights uh, with my mom, my dad, and these shoplifters. And, you know, back in the day, it wasn't like as regulated as it, as it is now. Like the cops come. Uh, they're a little faster these days. But back then, it, it was just crazy. I, my dad told me a story one time. These guys were throwing cans at him. And uh, so, yeah, so I come from a fighting family. I mean, it runs in the blood on both sides. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been around that type of stuff my whole life. <laughs> the tenacity. Your mom must be very tenacious. Oh, yeah. No, she's uh, uh, she's super. She's got I got the broad shoulders from her. Mm -hmm. She's super strong and I've, I've heard a lot of stories of her like in high school girls uh trying to bully her and and her getting into these crazy fights so there you go you know um i guess the the apple doesn't fall far from the tree so they say yeah no especially yeah in this case <laughs> yeah and you know this person also said that your mom gave their family a place to stay next to the store it shows you the type of person your mother is as well on both sides yeah no my my parents are they're they're good people i feel like they've they've instilled a lot of good um qualities in me and you know taking care of people and uh yeah they've they've they're really respectable my parents so i learned a lot from them nice nice now to the fighting right july 15th you're scheduled to return on the main card. You know, being on the main card after your debut is a, a pretty decent opportunity. So does, do you agree? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I'm, I'm really excited about this fight. And I think the placement on the card is, is perfect. And, and I think it gives this fight the eyes that it deserves because, I mean, Norma's done her thing in the featherweight division. She has a ton of followers and she's fought the who's who of the UFC's featherweight division. So I think her and me coming in with our power and our stand up i think it's going to be a great fight and it definitely is worthy of eyes on the main card yeah before we get into norma you were actually booked to fight in april against danielle wolf how disappointing was that cancellation for you because i know that your camps are it's a process for you you know to get to the fight yeah no so i was gonna fight danielle wolf i said yes the same day i think she said yes and then within i think three days she pulled out so it wasn't like uh, I trained for her for six months, but but at the same time I had been training, you know, since October. I feel I felt like I was going to go out there. I did what I needed to do, and I thought I was going to get the call back really fast. And it kind of didn't work out that way. So when they asked if I wanted to fight her, I said yeah. And then she pulled out a week later. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So it was kind of just like okay, back to the drawing board. Just keep training, which is what I've been doing since October. And I feel like I'm completely different than I was back in October. So I'm, I'm really excited to showcase my skills that I've, I've added on. Yeah, it's funny how like fighters sign fights and then they pull out a couple days. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense sometimes, right? Yeah, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, it could be a fighter is a fighter's worst enemy. So she probably was like, yeah, I'll fight anybody. And her coaches were like, hold on, hold your horses. You can't, do not fight her. She's going to rescue you. And they talked some sense into her and she pulled out. That's really what I think happened. All right. Sounds good. Norma Dumont, you know what I mean? Like you said, she's a vet. The fighting style, what's your opinions on that? I think she's boring. I think she stands there. She's a counter puncher. And mm -hmm. I think when people pressure her and, actually come forward they can tire her out and then she kind of gets flat and 
I think uh, the knockout is there. So, you know, I'm excited to just push the pace, go forward and, and finish this fight. What did you think of her last few fights? You know, she fought Carol Rosa and, and Danielle Wolf, who you were supposed to fight. Yeah. So she fought Carol Rosa. She got dropped in the last round and she, you know, she got the head nod for the decision. Uh, but I really, it wasn't anything special. You know, the fight was boring. It was kind of hard for me to watch. And I had to sit there and watch it because I'm like, I'm going to fight this chick. But I mean, there really wasn't anything special about it. And then her fighting Danielle Wolf, well, Danielle Wolf is super one dimensional. She's got like a jab and even that her, her jab is not for MMA. So Norma was just like, okay, let's just tap the jab down and hit her with the one, two. And then she took her down and, you know, kind of dominated, but it's real easy to dominate a white belt who doesn't know what they're doing, especially if you've been training MMA for some time. So I really wasn't impressed by either of those. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel, Killer instinct is missing in a lot of, of the female fighters. Yeah, I do. I do. And that's why I feel like uh, the women don't get as many eyes as they should. Mm -hmm. You know, Ronda Rousey was out there and she was yeah. killing chicks. You know, she was finishing fights. She was going forward. She wasn't really knocking people out, maybe Betch Cohea, but she was, she was looking for the finish. And mm -hmm. she wasn't in there to just get a paycheck. And I feel like that's a lot of them. And, and I'm in there to finish. You know, I train. I train all the time and i'm always looking for the finish and i train to make sure that i have enough energy to go for the finish well you definitely showed that in your usc debut first round finish a bonus as well that bonus right that's that's good <laughs> that's good money right i mean it took a while it finally came on my birthday but uh okay. yeah it was real nice wow. i liked it yeah on your birthday like unexpectedly that day it came yeah it was pretty cool but i yeah it was nice yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, if you could criticize yourself about that performance, you know, leading up to the finish, you know, what can you say? Uh, yeah, so, you know, with her, I really, there were certain things that we trained for, and I, if I watched it, like, my hands were a little low, my head was dipping to certain sides, and if I was facing some type of kickboxer extraordinaire who's going to throw these crazy head kicks, I might have been in trouble, but, but that's not what I was fighting. And uh, I've worked on a lot of that stuff. And then uh, I thought my jujitsu was on par with her, except to take down to the side control to the mount. But, you know, I got out and got on top real fast. So uh, just my timing, maybe. And I did cut a lot of weight for that fight. It, it was a lot of weight. And this time will be a little bit less weight. So I think I'll be a little faster and more on in tune with what's going on. Yeah, from our conversation in the past, you, you know, you talked about your camps there in a few locations. Could you break down that again? And are there any new spots that you're working at? So I'm I'm training at Game Fit. I started camp with him uh, about mm -hmm. two months before my last fight, and then I've been training with him this whole time. Like Max Payne, Griffin trains with him, Aspen Lad, uh, Fluffy Hernandez, and a lot of other fighters train with him. Um, uh, I forget their name. The Yan, the Yan chick, she trains with him. So I do a whole oh, bunch yeah, of strength yeah. and three times a week with him up in Sacramento. And then I've got Felipe Martinez, my boxing coach. He's here in Stockton. I'm training with him every day. I have uh, Caesar Gracie's Jiu Jitsu up there in Pleasant Hill. I go up there a few times. And then I've got Victor Galvin, who I he's my head coach. Um, he trained with the Diaz brothers for a long time, over 20 mm -hmm. years. There's black belt and jujitsu, black belt and sambo. So he's got a, a real good base that, that I've learned from. And and I think I'm very well read and prepared for this fight anywhere it goes. Game fit, they're just known for having fighters that can have a pace and just continue that pace. You know, it's it's something that mm -hmm. that's scary, right? <laughs> like it's scary to fight somebody like that. No, I know. And I'm actually so excited about this fight because I feel like when people push it on Norma, she kind of, you know, slows down. And you can see, watch any fight she fights. There's one grappling exchange and then she's huffing and puffing. So I'm really excited and happy about my, I'm, I feel like I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in. And I'll really be able to push the pace the whole 15 minutes if we go that far. For sure. And, you know, do, do you feel like that has helped you like kind of get the weight down a little bit faster and, and healthier. You know what I mean? That's the main key, right? Is healthy. Yeah. No, it is. It is. And it, it helps me. 
I feel fat. I feel faster too. Everything's mm-hmm. faster. My kicks are faster. My punches are faster. And, um, yeah, I just feel like everything's finally like in tune. I have a great schedule. Everything's going good. And, and I'm excited for July 15th. Have you worked with, uh, Aspen, I know Norma, Norma fought her in the past. You know, have you worked her, with her during this camp? Yeah, me and Aspen sparred bef- right before her fight against, uh, I think, Olga, that Russian chick. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we sparred, and um, I've got some other people I've been sparring and training with. So I feel more more than ready for, for Norma. And, and I feel like that fight against her and Norma, I mean, if you, you got to look at it in hindsight. Aspen Lad cut to 135 pounds, 100, I don't know, 137 pounds, like a week before. And then they're like, hey, you want to do main event against Norma 10 pounds up? So you watch that fight, and even Aspen wasn't at her full potential because she had just weighed in 10 pounds lower than that and then cut weight again. So um, I feel like even in a great camp, Aspen would have pounded Norma too. What are you expecting out of yourself against against Norma? Seems like it's hard to top that first one, you know, so, the debut. It is. It is. Um, you know, I'm expecting to come forward, push the pace, and make her tired. And then, honestly, I think maybe a knockout in round two. That's what I'm hoping for. All right. All right. Nice. Um, now, s- some talk about the division, right? Amanda Nunez, she retires after defending her title against uh, Irene Aldana on the pay-per-view, the last pay-per-view. Where would you rank her? You know, I mean, if she never fights again, where would you rank her against the greatest ever? You know, you got Ronda Rousey up there. You got Chris Cyborg. Where do you see her? Amanda Nunez? Yes. Or Okay. Um, you know, I, I really see Ronda as number one because Ronda is the face that came in. You know, she came in. She was all business, no smiles, no shaking hands. And, and she really put women on the map. I mean, she made Dana put women in the UFC and, and he really wasn't going to do that before. And, and I feel like there's still a lot of women that they're like, man, we don't really need these girls fighting in the UFC. So I think Rhonda did a lot um, for putting women on the map and then uh, cyborg Nunez. I mean, they're right there too, but Nunez, I feel like she's, if you watch her fight, even against cats and Gano, she got tired too. And then I feel like everybody was like, Oh, Nunez has power. So they all kind of, got scared and, and women I feel like get scared when there's power uh I mean I f- feel that when I, I spar people they the power so I don't know her last fight against Irene Aldana made her look human you know very beatable and to be honest there's really nobody out there making waves right now and I don't think there's anybody that's making her excited to train every day so they say people retire and they come back so she might come back we'll see after July 15th, how my performance goes, but I, I just don't think, you know, I think people come back sometimes when, after they retire. If, if what you're saying is true, you know, um, she's retiring at the right moment, right on top with two belts, you know, she walks away unscathed, so to say. Yeah, no, I mean, she is. I mean, that's the thing. With fighting, you see all these people, they always go away at the wrong time. You know, they're they're knocked out. They're KO'd. They get messed up. It's always good to go on on top, you know? There, there's no... Nobody can say you got messed up by so-and-so. You're going out on top. And in one way, you're going out like a hero. And the other one, you're going out like... Maybe think people think that you're being a pussy and you're scared of people. But, you know... It, it, it goes both ways, I guess. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, after that fight, Dana White said that the division probably, he, he used the word probably, ends with Amanda Nunez's retirement. How does that impact you? He said probably. Uh, so mm-hmm. in my in my opinion, I just feel like that gives me more drive. You know, I got to go out there and put on a performance and make him change his mind. I don't think his mind is made up yet, but it's very, very close. So I feel like if I go out there and perform the way I plan on performing, I think all the doors will open. So I'm really not stressing about it. You know, I, I just got to do what I got to do and, and just know that good things are going to happen. You got to do your own version of Ronda Rousey, right? Just for the division. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe not an arm bar, but uh, something else. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a ground and pound or something, right? It's a more yeah. violent. I, I, I honestly love arm bars. They really, that's probably one of my highest submissions I get in training but um i prefer ground and pound i think yeah. the fans I think a lot of, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. I think the fans do too. Well, July 15th, you know, you get your opportunity in Las Vegas. Thank you so much, Chelsea, for the time. Main card, big opportunity against a, 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 a pretty decent vet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you for having me.